know, one of the hottest teams coming into the tournament, and they've continued their winning ways with sweeps over Southeastern Louisiana and then UNI to make it to their eighth straight regional semifinal. Winner gets either Texas or Marquette in the round of eight on Saturday. Little early volleyball this morning. Are you ready, Holly? Love it. Whole day of volleyball. Minnesota will serve first. Gabby Gonzalez steps in to get the pass to Mac Pedraza, and they go to Emily Londot on that right pin. Emily Londot has been so confident, getting her feet to the ball, hitting with range. Good start for Ohio State, nailing that first pass. Both teams want to put a lot of pressure on one another with that tough service game. Look, there are no unknowns, right, between these two teams. They played two weeks ago. No, and, and they've had plenty of time to prepare this week. Cece McGraw with a great pass to Shaftmaster, and there are your two stars we talked about, Taylor Lanfair with the kill. Exactly, and you know both teams are going to go to their star players, Taylor Lanfair for Minnesota and Emily Londot for Ohio State. It's so great to see Taylor Lanfair back. She had an ad abdominal tear last year. And I mean, you use your core for everything. What a tough injury. It is. It's something that takes a long time to recover from. And most athletes don't take the time. It'll be a free ball back to Minnesota. Shaftmaster going in the middle to Carter Booth, the freshman, the Colorado Gatorade Player of the Year. Carter Booth has emerged and blossomed as a middle blocker and attacker for Minnesota. Really nice potential at six foot seven. She can affect the game on both sides of the ball. Pedraza is going to push it out to Janasia Moore at Ohio State with the point. Janasia Moore has worked so hard to develop her range and be able to attack all sides of the court. She has been a really bright spot for Ohio State this season. You know, it was a really interesting end of the season for Ohio State. They lost their last four matches, and a couple of those were surprises. So we asked Jen Flynn Oldenburg, you know, what has been the message? And she said, the focus is on how are you going to respond to losing those last four regular season matches? And so far, their response has been great. And this is a senior heavy group that's very mature, and they can bounce back, and they should be better at responding. Little misconnection in the middle, Pedraza to Raider. Jenna Winnis on the serve for Minnesota. Pedraza, and she's going back in the middle looking for a touch call, and she will get it. Riley Raider with the kill. Interesting, Minnesota going right at Kylie Murr, the Libero of the year for Ohio State. She's just taking care of that first contact. Yeah, first time Ohio State has had the Big Ten setter of the year and the Big Ten defensive player of the year. Landfair tipping over the block. Pedraza reached to touch that ball and Londot already off of her feet trying to dig that ball. Opening set of this regional semifinal matchup. Winner will get either Texas or Marquette on Saturday. Playing to 25, you have to win by two. Pedraza back to Gonzalez. Cece McGraw underneath it and Winnis going into the replay table. That'll be long and a point for Ohio State. We've seen a lot of pursuit balls. This has been the theme in the NCAA tournament. Players going after balls with reckless abandon. That's another player over the table. And, Min and Minnesota saves it and keeps that in play. Yeah, if you haven't seen the play, it's from Houston last week in the first and second rounds. One of their defensive players dove into a table to save the ball. Last play, Shaftmaster for Minnesota. Ohio attacked that ball, and as a front row setter, if you're Ohio State, you need to have a blocker in front of her. She's six foot three and can be an offensive threat. Londot working on the slide, but Minnesota's block, that is so tough. Erica Davis is there along with McKenna Wooker. McKenna Wooker was ready for that play, hands pressed over the net, and that was the difference. Early hand penetration over the net for that block. They'll try it again. This time, a little powerful tip there from Emily Londot. Well, the middle of the court is vulnerable because you've got defenders on the perimeter, and Londot knows that. Good throw down to the middle. 
Gabby Gonzalez stepping back, a second team, all Big Ten selection. She's seventh in the conference in aces! Pays off to be aggressive, trickle over the top of the tape and drops for the Ohio State ace. For Minnesota right now, um, Shaftmaster's in the front row, and Ohio State needs to be aware of that and put a blocker in front of her. There she goes, she can take it, looking for the back corner, and she does. And she's so good at attacking the deep corners. A lot of setters like to throw to the middle of the court, which is also vulnerable, but the deep corner is a tough one to defend. We, you know, we got the chance to talk to Melanie Schaffmaster yesterday. She said confidence it is so key for her this year. It's been a big change. Well, she was the top setter recruit in the country, but she lacked the confidence. She said she feels like she finally belongs at the top echelon of this game. How have you seen that translate for Schaffmaster on the court? Well, the confidence in, in getting all her hitters involved and then attacking when, and calling her own number when it's the time. And she's already had two kills early in this first set. And Melanie Schaffmaster, a first team all Big Ten selection this year. She spent a couple of summers too with the collegiate national team. She said that's really helped her as that serve goes long. She's got a few weapons to set out there too, especially some new firepower in the middle. Yeah, I feel like they, they have a very balanced attack and two middle attackers now from Minnesota who can really help their pins. Yeah, adding Erica Davis, who actually played for Ohio State before coming to Minnesota. So facing her old team for the third time this season as Janasia Moore terminates. Janasia Moore has been impressive so far from Ohio State on the left side. A little bit undersized, but very dynamic. Doing a good job seeing the block and hitting inside of it. Dot serving at Landfair. And there's Erica Davis. Ohio State wants to serve at Landfair, but not right at her platform. They want to move her short and deep. And that was a perfect pass from Landfair, setting up that quick offense out of the middle. And yeah, when you get that perfect pass, you can go to your middles, who are naturally going to hit for a higher percentage. Close at the net, Carter Booth battling. Pedraza setting her middle, Riley Raider. Can we talk about that battle in the middle? Mac Pedraza going up against six foot seven. Carter Booth on the joust in Ohio State comes up with a tight pass. Mac Pedraza, she is fearless according to her coach and it shows right there and they're able to run that quick attack back in transition. Mac Pedraza, the Big Ten setter of the year. Fifth in career assists at Ohio State. Service oh, error, Buckeyes. I feel like both teams are serving too easy. Uh, right at the platform, both teams have been in system. A little bit of nerves in this first set, but both teams can pick up the service pressure. That's always a key, right? Talking to coaches, you want to win the serve pass game? Number one rule. Nice pass from Sarah Sue Morbitzer. Lundot with the tip from the back row. Landfair off the block. CeCe McGraw picks up that ball defensively for Minnesota. And they're able to attack back. Look at CC McGraw take that middle ball that drops often and then Landfair working that seam of the block. Another great pass from Morbitzer and they go back to the middle with Riley Raider. That's gonna be her third kill. And you see Ohio State in system. Putrat's a very good at running that middle quick attack to Riley Raider. So if you're gonna take that middle attack out, you need to serve the ball tougher. It's a pretty easy serve, too, right to the Libero. Scoops it up, and Landfair has her fourth kill. Both teams win in system are dangerous, and this is going to be the difference in the match. Who is going to take the other team out of system? And that's going to come from the service line. You want to attack. right there Taylor Landfair able to go at Morbitzer get a little shank there and that pays off for Minnesota able to score a point good movement on that serve it's her 25th ace of the season Landfair will go back at Morbitzer pulls Pedraza a little bit off the net 
A couple of points in a row now for the Gophers. Shaftmaster and Booth, huge block for Minnesota, 6-3-6-7. If you're the setter for Ohio State, maybe you go away from her, either back row or attack the left side of the court. Yeah, this Minnesota team is a great blocking team. They're fourth in the nation. They average almost three blocks per set. There's Booth with a big block touch. What a layout by Walker to save it, and Mac Pedraza getting aggressive. Mac Pedraza got her feet to the ball for Ohio State and threw it down. Communication breakdown right there for Minnesota, but they're able to scramble and keep it alive. Look at Mac get her feet there, ready to battle. Shaftmaster being offensive as well. Londot off the bump set, turns it down the line, whoa. That is something Emily Londot has done really well this season, hitting with range. She can hit that hard angle ball, attack the seam, but this time she gets there and turns it down the line. Very deceptive and hard to stop. You know, we were talking about that yesterday, watching Ohio State's practice about how crafty she is, and that's really tough on a block. Attacking air, Minnesota, point for Ohio State. Wenis just didn't get a good hand contact on that ball and it sailed long. Minnesota still hitting 700 in this opening set. Wow. Gotta buckle up. Shaftmaster has to bump set Wooker and it's McKenna Wooker finding the court on the other side. We step aside as Minnesota is the first to 15. The round of 16 here in Austin continues. Coverage of the Division I Women's Volleyball Championship continues all day on ESPN2 and ESPNU with the regional semifinals. For more information on match times and listings, visit NCAA.com. The home for all 90 NCAA championships. The number one overall seed in the house. The Texas Longhorns getting to host a regional again here in Austin. They will play Marquette approximately 2 Eastern here on ESPN2 or 30 minutes after this match concludes. McKenna Walker with a swing. Gonzalez has to readjust. And there's going to be a net violation on Ohio State. We were looking in the break, Holly. These teams are both, I mean, Minnesota's hitting 615, Ohio State's hitting 400. Those are extremely high hitting percentage, and I told you it's because both teams are serving the ball too easy. They're also, they're also both very effective offenses, but hard to hit those numbers when the setter is off the net. McGraw with the layout. This will be Jenna Winnis. Jenna Winnis from the back row, attacking the middle of the court in transition. But CeCe McGraw for Minnesota has made some big time digs to score points. Jenna Winnis coming back to her home state. Is from Frisco, Texas, so about three hours away. You know, we've talked about the talent that we have here in this Austin Regional. First of all, we're biased, but I think this is the best regional. We got lucky, Holly. Well, I think they're all really good, but this one is extremely exciting. So many talented players, fun to watch, and all four of the setters from four teams are really talented. You've got SKT from Texas, the Big 12 setter of the year. She is strong physically at the net. Mac Pedraza, according to her coach, she is fearless and just goes for it. And then Yadi Anchante for Marquette. Great personality. Her team loves her and rallies around her. And then Melanie Shaftmaster at Minnesota, six foot three. Huge block can be an offensive threat as well and is doing a really nice job distributing the ball. Of course, we're giving the setters some love. We got a setter up here with uh, us in the of booth. Of course. You have to. It's like the quarterback of the volleyball team. Yeah, but we're going to get to see Sage, Kaha, Ina Torres, and also Yadi Anchante coming up in our second match. That should be a good battle. Texas and Marquette. There's Sage. 
But so far, Sutter's got to be loving this match because they've gotten some great passes because we haven't seen super tough serves like we talked about, but they're able to use multiple weapons. Yeah, they've been able to run the offense they want to, and that's why the teams are hitting for such high numbers. Minnesota still at 643. Ohio State coming down a little, 333. Only one error for Minnesota. And led by Taylor Landfair with a perfect four for four, hitting 1,000 on the left pin. Minnesota on a 3-0 run, playing to 25, and CeCe McGraw continues behind the service line out of this timeout. Short serve, point for the Buckeyes. Minnesota that time trying to serve into traffic. There was a left side stack for Ohio State, but that ball falls short. I know both coaches are talking to their players about picking up that service pressure, finding some good spots. Here's Gabby Gonzalez. And Landfair handles it beautifully. McKenna Wooker, free ball. Back to the Buckeyes. Pedraza going to one dot, tooling the block. Minnesota knows that Ohio State wants to get Londot the ball, and they still can't stop her. They've got a well-formed block, but she's attacking the outside hand of the left blocker, and it's paying off. Back at Landwehr, this one passed tight, but they still get it off to their middle. And a point for the Buckeyes. What a defensive play. Well, first of all, it started with a tight pass from Minnesota, but you've got a six foot three setter who's able to feed her middle. Perfect dig and transition by Ohio State. So Ohio State responds after Minnesota's three point run. The Buckeyes now on a 3 0 run, and they've been going after Taylor Landfair at the service line. This is a really special group. Jen Flynn Oldenburg is so excited to have the experience that she does on this team, but also it's special for her because the third straight regional semifinal this program has been to, and she used to be an Ohio State Buckeye, so this program means even more to her. She was a standout setter from 96 to 99, was with the national team for a while, and she really puts her athletes first. She champions her athletes and says, do your thing, and she wants to help them flourish as athletes and people. Now she took over this program, and we were talking to her yesterday just about the evolve, how this program has evolved in her three years. And she said COVID actually was really beneficial. They spent every day on Zoom talking volleyball. That immediately increased the volleyball IQ of the whole group, just talking about the game. Which is interesting because I'm sure everybody missed the sport, right? So they were all ears and sponges to growing and learning the game over Zoom. Who would have thought that would have worked? And now they are looking for their first regional final since two. 2004. Well, checking in on the basketball world, want to let you know that it's Saturday on ESPN. You can catch a men's college basketball doubleheader. It starts at 3.15 Eastern with Georgia Tech taking on North Carolina. It'll be followed at 5.15 by number six Kansas against Missouri. Those are former Big 12 rivals. They're going to play in Columbia for the first time in 10 years. You can see it on ESPN and the ESPN app. Again, that's coming up on Saturday. Ohio State looking to extend this 3-0 run with Gabby Gonzalez serving. <laughs> Service error. Ohio State trying to mix it up with that short serve, but falling short. Both teams trying to pick up that serve, score some points, get the other team out of system. They go down the line to Moore. Pedraza back row with Gonzalez right in the middle of the floor. Well, that ball can't drop, but Gabby Gonzalez does a good job throwing it to that vulnerable part of the court when all the defenders are on the perimeter. One blocker in front of her, CC McGraw, almost gets there for Minnesota. Here's Kylie Murr. They've gone after Landfair several times. That was a great pass, and they go to Jenna Wendis with some pop. Well, they're serving at Landfair, but literally not making her move. And she is very good with her platform, especially when she doesn't need to move. And Shaftmaster feeds Wenis on that left side attack. Rachel Kilkelly subs in. Blondot right side. Ouch. 
That's a perfect pass. And then obviously you're going to go to your hot hitter. Minnesota has not been able to stop Londot on that right side. Now just one attacking error for Emily Londot. Six kills hitting 625. That ball was flat right at Taylor Landfair's head, and it looked like it was going to sail along, but drops on the back line. This one is just wide as they were trying to go down the line again towards Taylor Landfair. Elise McGee is going to sub in for Minnesota here, number 10 in white. Minnesota needing five points to take the opening set. You got to win by two. Londot from the back row. Emily Londot make it number seven. Didn't look like she made great hand contact with that ball, and I actually think it was going long, but Minnesota touches it trying to stop it. Right there, Petrasa's in the front row, so they use Londot out of the back row. She has been able to score at will so far in this first set. Shaftmaster to Winnis on the right side. Winnis again, they've been using her more on the right pin. It's still up. Minnesota thought it was down. They'll try a third swing. And that time it is in on the right side for Winnis. Oh my goodness. Ooh. First of all, Winnis loves to hit the ball. Her first roll shot came back up, but her second swing was a bomb. And look at Londot get under it. Minnesota was already celebrating, but gathered enough to save that point. Wow. So look at this Minnesota team. You know, we saw Jenna Winnis swing predominantly on the left pin this year. They're doing something different with her this year. Yeah, basically they're running a three hitter or three pin hitter offense. So Jenna swings two on the left and one, on, sorry, two on the right, one on the left, and they can interchange where Landfair and Worker hit the ball, but Worker's actually primarily on the left side, but they've got the versatility to move them around. It took them a while to get to that rotation because they had some injuries early on in the season, but obviously have settled in nicely because they're on a a great streak here going into the tournament. Yeah, I mean, it's important to improve as the season goes on, and they've been able to work into this lineup. So Ohio State is going to call timeout. This will be the final timeout for Ohio State in this set. Minnesota needs three more kills to take the opening frame. And Taylor Landfair, Holly, she is still perfect on that left pin. Five kills on five swings, hitting a 1,000. Incredible, and she's been passing the ball extremely well. If you're Ohio State, you want to make her move. I think they're trying to pile some responsibility on her by serving at her, but they got to make her move if they want to get Minnesota out of the system. She has improved her serve-receive skills, and obviously her offense is super hot today. Yeah, the Big Ten Player of the Year. There is a great article on Minnesota's website that Taylor wrote about her journey coming back from that abdominal tear last year, and she said going up, injured in a match, was some of the worst pain she ever felt. But she wanted to make sure when she was out for the season that that energy she brought, she still wanted to show it to her teammates. So she took it to the bench. Yeah, and she learned how to be a great teammate from the bench, and that's been contagious. She's taught her teammates to do the same. And now she has come back and having an even better season than she did two years ago when she was an honorable mention All-American. She was the number one overall recruit when she came out of high school, the Illinois Gatorade Player of the Year. And what's scary for everyone else except for Minnesota is that she has three seasons of eligibility left. Incredible. Yeah. <laughs> and she's already the Big Ten Player of the Year this year. Yeah, so the sky's the limit for Taylor Landfair. Had 11 kills in their second round match against UNI. She's had 20 or more kills five times this season. And we mentioned even more impressive, too, because they've targeted her a lot to pass today. Six rotation player Taylor Landfair has emerged as one of the best in the country all around game, both sides of the ball. Here's Winnis. Oh, 
they're going to give the point to Ohio State. You're not allowed to block the setter when she is trying to set the ball. If she's attacking, you can block her. Pedraza for Ohio State was going up on that tight ball to set it. Watch this ball. She's setting. She is not attacking. Carter Booth is not allowed to do that. I think Pedraza was in the net. We'll see. We might have an early challenge. So I think we will. We haven't seen Hugh McCutcheon pull the green challenge card. He will not, so it will be Ohio State's point. McGraw diving in, Landfair blocked. Pedraza to Gonzalez with the tip. Shaftmaster connecting with Carter Booth on the slide. Emily London, I don't know how she terminated that, but wow. But the transition offense for Ohio State, so impressive, the way they're playing D down that line, and then pushing it back row. Gabby Gonzalez gets the assist on that. Having a player who's not your setter or Libro set the ball like that for a kill, that's impressive. Oh, remember, such an experienced team for Ohio State. It'll be a timeout, Minnesota. So both teams have used all their timeouts for this set. It's now a race to 25. Got to win by two. Talking about that experience for Ohio State, here's how their roster breaks down. Seven seniors. They had no incoming transfers this year. They were one of the few teams in the country, especially ranked in the top 20, that did not get anybody from that transfer portal. But they had a solid group of seniors who worked through this program together. So while we take this time out, I want to let you know a little about some more hoops coming up Saturday on ABC. You can catch a men's college basketball doubleheader starting at 1 p.m. Eastern. We've got Georgetown and Syracuse. They'll be followed at three. Top eight matchup, Alabama and Houston. Men's college basketball Saturday on ABC and the ESPN app. Hey, don't forget, we have all the round of 16 covered for you on our ESPN family of networks. Jared Elliott and his Texas Longhorns will take on Marquette here on ESPN2 coming up approximately 2 Eastern. But you can see matches all day today here on ESPN2. Also over on ESPNU right now, Oregon and Nebraska in the third set. Oregon up 13 to 10. That match is tied at a set apiece. So we've got you covered. Get out your ESPN app and tune in all the volleyball matches in their entirety on our ESPN Family Networks. It could be my favorite day of the year. I mean, full of yes. great volleyball matches, the top 16 teams in the country battling it out. Can you believe a week from Saturday will crown a national champion? No, I can't wait. Oh, it went so fast, right? Flying by. Landfair, that is number six. Minnesota, when they're in system, they run that fast ball out to Landfair on that left hand. And just so tough to stop. Especially when she's hitting 750. Warbitzer, nice high pass. Londot coming in, sent back by Booth. Gonzalez, it's coming over. Tussle at the net, it's going Minnesota's way. Set point, Golden Gophers. Good effort by Lawn Dot to try and get that ball off the joust. I think it was gonna drop in. Booth getting very aggressive for Minnesota at the net with her block. They're wiping up a little moisture on the floor where Lawn Dot dove for that ball. Emily Londot has been working hard. Eight kills on 10 swings. Yeah, she's hitting 700. This is an offensive match. It, cer <laughs> it certainly is. <laughs> Landfair serving for the set. They'll give it up to Londot. Shaftmaster. Oh, it's in. What an McKenna Walker and set one to Minnesota.
Watch, watch McKenna Wooker get her feet to this ball to hit an impossible angle to finish the first set for the Minnesota victory. Well, this will be Hugh McCutcheon's final season as the head coach of the Minnesota Golden Gophers. And wow, what a resume. He led the men's national team to gold in the 20, 2008 Olympics and then went over to the women's national team, got them a silver medal in London. I mean, this resume, it does not fit on one sheet at all. He took over this Minnesota program back in 2011, and he has taken the Gophers to some great heights. This program has just thrived under the leadership of Hugh McCutcheon, was the coach of the year back in 2015 but also has gotten into some really big matches. Three national semifinal appearances, a couple of Big Ten championships. He's also in the International Volleyball Hall of Fame. Hugh McCutcheon has done a little bit of everything with the sport of volleyball. He certainly has. He wrote a book called Championship Behaviors, and you can tell after talking to him yesterday that he's teaching his athletes life lessons, how to respond in cer certain situations, how to set yourself up for success, and he's you know, someone who will be missed in terms of the coaching for volleyball on the sideline of Minnesota, but he'll be helping the athletic department. Yeah, as soon as the season is over, he is going to move to an assistant athletic director for coaching development. That'll start in January. Uh, Matt Houck will serve as the interim head coach as soon as the season is over. But as we mentioned, Minnesota has been, you know, they've really turned it up a notch since that retirement announced that they've gone 12 and 2. Blondot off the block, CeCe McGraw, the one-arm save, and Taylor Landfair still up by the Buckeyes. Minnesota took the opening set 25-22. Gonzalez readjusting. Shaftmaster back to Landfair. That was the first point of the second set, and it was a lifetime. Incredible. Both teams putting out every effort to keep the ball alive. Shaftmaster is so good at attacking that ball. That time, a two-handed push to the corner. This is the numbers we were talking about since the announcement of McCutcheon stepping away from coaching into a new role. Numbers gotten better for Minnesota. Maybe he knew exactly what to do to light the fire of his team. How about that fire right there from Emily Londot, who has now nine kills. Both teams, really good offensive performances so far in this match, both hitting over 400. Point, Service error, Gonzalez. Minnesota has two blocks. Ohio State, they blocked the ball, but they've been covered, so they haven't counted as official blocks. Here's Jenna Winnis. Murr underneath it. Moore on the pin. Minnesota block number three. And that's one of the benefits of having a six foot three setter on the right side. Melanie Shaftmaster gets up and sets up that block on the pin. Solo block for her, even though Carter Booth gets the assist. Look, being 6'3", you asked her yesterday when we talked to Melanie Schaffmaster, were you always a setter or did you hit? She said, no, I started setting, I think it was sixth grade, and then she grew. Yeah, prior to sixth grade. I said, yeah. when did you start playing volleyball? She said, I was in the gym by age four. Wow. Uh, because her older sisters played. So started out as a setter, hit a huge growth spurt, and they said, well, I'm just going to keep you at the setting position. And she loves being in charge, running the offense. You get to affect the game, right? Touch every other ball. Minnesota has not been able to slow down Emily Lonbot, but this time look at Carter Booth working to close that seam and get that block for Minnesota. She and Taylor Landfair. You know, she averages Carter Booth almost one and a half blocks per set. Her 1.47 blocks per set would be seventh all time in Minnesota history. It's She's a freshman. Impressive. She came in early in January so she could get the training and get the skill work that she needed to be an impact player her freshman season. And her dad, Calvin, played 10 seasons in the NBA. He's the GM of the Nuggets. And her brother is actually going to go play basketball at Penn State next season. 
Wow, the block is everywhere right now for the Gophers. It certainly is, and that is a well-formed big block for Minnesota on that right pin. You want to set away from them. Gophers eating right now, and they're doing it with their block, a 3-0 run. Nothing getting past that. Five blocks in this match for Minnesota now. Gophers on a 3-0 run. They've dropped Ohio State's hitting percentage to negative 182 in this set. Pedraza going middle with Raider. Transition set too tight from Minnesota, but good dig off the quick Raider attack by Ohio State. This is the round of 16 here in Austin. Winner of this match will face either Texas, who's the number one overall seed, or Marquette, who is the four seed in this Texas quadrant. Shaftmaster tipped it over her head. Moore off the block. Nice little soft touch by Janasia Moore, number 18 in red, off the block. Choosing to go around that big block that just stopped her. Now, Janasia Moore had a big offseason. She was in a preseason battle for that position, won that starting job. Early, her serve receive was really good and attacking the whole court. That's something that she's really added to her game. There she goes again. This time, the power off the block. Raider with the throw down. Really nice first contact by Ohio State, and Pedraza's in the front row. She's jump setting that ball. So for Minnesota, watch them. They're paying attention. Up in the air, and then the quick one-on-one -on -one out of the middle by Raider. Now you saw McKenna Wooker jump with the setter. Got to respect her. Wooker. Pretty shot from McKenna Wooker, a true freshman, all Big Ten freshman team. Wisconsin Gatorade Player of the Year, yet she is a Minnesota Gopher. And she has been since the eighth grade. She made that decision, committed to come play for Hugh McCutcheon at Minnesota. Her best friend on the team, that would be Taylor Lamfair. It's a pretty big one-two punch on the left side. Erica Davis in the middle. Reader in the middle. Wooker, good up, Gonzalez. Here comes Londot. Power, 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 Emily Londot. I love the way both setters are working to push their offense, making good decisions, right? Not just location of the sets, but making good decisions, where to set the ball in good situations. And there, Emily Londot out of the back row down that line. How do you feel about the set distribution right now for Ohio State? It's pretty good. I think they've been running what they want, looking for matchups. Obviously, that first contact, especially in the first set, they were able to run what they want. There, Mac Pedraza sets up the block for Ohio State. Gets her feet there, big press over the net. That's the first block for the Buckeyes today. It's going to be tight. It goes off Minnesota into the antenna. Two blocks in a row. That time, Gabby Gonzalez knew her blocking assignment. When Melanie Schaffmaster's in the front row, you need to pay attention. She is an offensive threat. First time with the lead for Ohio State since it was 1-0 in the first set. Landfair out of the back row. Gonzalez into the stands. Free ball back to Minnesota. And Landfair was over the three meter line when she attacked that ball. You have to take off behind the line. Lots of hustle happening here. Look at this ball off Murr. And then Gabby Gonzalez, one arm save to stay in that rally, earns them the point. Walker 
Booker takes advantage of the late block by Ohio State. They're late on their press over, and if Minnesota continues to run that fast offense, you cannot be late on your press. This will be a bump set for Murr. And Gonzalez lets it fly, no touch. But Minnesota, tough serve, gets Ohio State out of system. That's not a set that they want to see. That's a tough one coming from off the net against the huge Minnesota block. That one grazed the tape, you could hear it. A little chicken wing for Erica Davis to get it up. Riley Raider. Landfair back row. Landfair, good location attacking the seam between the two defenders. Look at Shaftmaster dig that ball and then Landfair in transition right between the left back and the middle back. I think we're seeing her more out of the back row in this set than we did in the first set. We are. Melanie Schaffmaster going after Morbitzer, the defensive specialist for Ohio State, and there gets an ace. Four straight points for the Gophers. Another bump set to Gonzalez. Cece McGraw, the bump set to Walker. Pedraza in the middle with Raider. I love the confidence from Mac Pedraza going to Riley Raider. Doesn't matter when, their connection is strong, and that's so important to have trust with that quick attack. And that's a connection that has re-emerged late in the season. It was missing a little bit early on, and Mac Pedraza and Riley Raider, they are back. And I think Landfair was over the three-meter line again. Yeah, if you're a shaft master, you want to pull that set back just a tiny bit, giving Landfair room to take off. You have to take off behind the three meter line. You can land anywhere. <laughs> Service error, Riley Raider. McCutcheon in Minnesota looking for their 11th regional final appearance. It would be the sixth under Hugh. Ohio State, they haven't been to a regional final since 2004. Gonzalez, the tip is going to work for Gabby Gonzalez. Gabby Gonzalez is really good at attacking that middle part of the court. I know Minnesota has that on their scouting report, but that ball has dropped for Ohio State today. That's just Gonzalez's second kill, though. She's hitting negative. It's funny, we saw both teams hit over 400 in the first set, and now they're both hitting under 100. I think they picked up their blocking and service pressure. We've seen the last couple of servers for Ohio State try and serve that short ball into traffic, but into the net. Seven service errors now for Ohio State. Elise McGee's turn. Emily Landon, give her 11 kills. And every time she runs that little two ball out of the middle, they set her. So if you're Minnesota, you know that's coming, and they still can't stop her. Shaftmaster to Booth. Shaftmaster to Booth was fast. It was a little bit low, but Booth able to get her hand on it, sneak it over the net. CeCe McGraw nails that pass. Shaftmaster gets under it just a tiny bit low. She is 6'7", too. You got to get it up there. That's true. It's a big window to set. <laughs> People think it's easy, but it's not an easy window when they're that high above the net. Minnesota's block, Carter Booth, Taylor Landfair teaming up. We're seeing tougher serving, more defensive stops at the net, and Minnesota really making their presence felt. 
That is six blocks now for Minnesota. They've had double figure blocks in 20 matches this season. They've won 16 of those matches when they have double figure blocks. Adria Powell in the middle on that attack for Ohio State. This is Moore. There is a touch call on it. Point Buckeyes. Janasia Moore. Referee is signaling a touch. At least the lines person was. No argument by Minnesota. We do have the challenge system in play. Each team gets two challenges. You get to keep it if you're correct in your challenge. Oh, Murr all over it. So is McGraw. Booth on the slide. Boom! Defense is fantastic on both sides of the net, but Shaftmaster runs Booth in transition, gives her some nice height. She's able to go over the top and down for Minnesota. Yeah, she can hit in front of the setter. She can hit behind the setter. Does not look like a freshman out there in the middle. Certainly doesn't. And Shaftmaster, an experienced setter, knows where to put her hitter so they can score. Going over. Janesha Moore, saved by Winnis. Here comes Wooker. Moore again! Pedraza able to isolate Janesha Moore on the left side because she's front row. So they need to block her. You see Booth is on Pedraza and that isolates Janesha Moore on the left side. That's how Ohio State's able to score. Pedraza, keeping that defense for Minnesota honest. Here comes Londot. Wow. Emily Londot out of the back row, and Carter Booth was late on her right-hand press. Londot gets on the ball so quick that you have to be pressed and over. Londot already with a double-double, 12 kills, 10 digs. It's her 15th of the season. We're just in the second set. Oh, Service error. Serving from Minnesota, number seven, CeCe McGraw. Erica Davis comes in from Minnesota, playing the team on the opposite side of the net that she played for last year. I spent one season at Ohio State before becoming a Golden Gopher. Oh, center line violation. Correct. Point for the Gophers. Janasia Moore trying to save that ball went under the net and that's what was called. Uh, yeah, that connection is so good. Riley <laughs> Raider and Mac Pedraza. Kylie Murgis putting a dime right in Mac Pedraza's hand so she can run that ball to Riley Raider. And Minnesota needs to know that that connection right there is working really well. They need to try and slow it down. Yeah, Raider is hitting 667. That's a lot. It's a high number. No touch on that attack from Erica Davis. Right now, Shaftmaster in the front row for Minnesota. If you're Ohio State, you need to pay attention to her as an attacker. I've said it before, but she's been able to score. Wooker turns it down the line. And there's gonna be a net violation on Minnesota. Wooker got her hands caught in the net, trying to make a block move in Ohio State on a run. Minnesota calls timeout. Ohio State the first to 20 here in set number two. Ohio State's Emily Londot has been hot. She's 13.
for 22. She's hitting 455 and she's got 11 digs, hitting with great range. In her junior year, she has really emerged as one of the best hitters in the country. Now this season, she's accounted for 27% of Ohio State's kills, a three-time All-Big Ten selection, first team All-Big Ten this season. Was an AVCA All-American last season and the National Freshman of the Year in 2020. You come in, you have a freshman year like Emily Londa did. Second time around, you're going to put some pressure on yourself. And she was kind of feeling it last year at times. Yeah, well, teams aren't going to be surprised by you. That is, they often call it a sophomore slump because now you're no longer a secret. People know how to scout you. So you have to emerge and continue to get better. And that's what happened with Emily Longdon. Yeah, and in her junior year, that range, as we've talked about, her attacking range has really helped her continue that success. Right now, Ohio State's been able to get Minnesota out of system, and it's paying off. Ohio State now up by three. It's a 7-2 to two run for Ohio State, their largest lead of the match. Minnesota took the first set, 25-22, another point for the Buckeyes. Passing breakdown for Minnesota, and Ohio State is taking advantage of it. points in a row for the Buckeyes. Nia Gross is in for Minnesota in the middle, number eight in white. Wooker attacking off the block. That ends the run. Wooker able to get her feet under that emergency swing, but pulls the block for Minnesota. So Erica Davis now in in the middle for Minnesota. Shaftmaster to the back row to serve. Gonzalez had to reach behind her to get it. Looking for the free ball over, Murr gets it there. Jenna Winnis, good layout by Morbitzer. Point Buckeyes! Defense turns into offense and Londot finds the middle open. Morbitzer slides under that back row attack. Little softness into the middle of the court and Ohio State now up 23-19. Minnesota, seven attacking errors in this set. They're hitting zero. Ohio State, it's been a struggle too. They also have seven, seven attacking errors, but hitting 150, that 5-0 run really propelled the Buckeyes. Incredible. I mean, right now Ohio State hitting 150 compared to Minnesota's 0-0-0. That's because their passing broke down. So Minnesota using its final timeout here. Saturday on ESPN, you can catch a men's college basketball doubleheader. It starts at 315 Eastern, Georgia Tech and North Carolina, followed by Kansas and Missouri. See it live on ESPN and the ESPN app. And don't forget on Saturday, too, we're also going to have the round of eight, the regional finals for you. We'll be over on ESPNU at 6 Eastern for the winner of this match, taking on the winner of Texas and Marquette. That match is coming up today. Approximately 2 Eastern. It depends on how long this match goes. There'll be 30 minutes in between. All 16 teams in action today. Here's how our portion of the bracket looks. Number, Texas is the number one overall seed for the second time in program history. They'll face Marquette coming up, and then Ohio State, Minnesota. Watching this match, I mean, you feel like these two teams know each other. Like, this is the third meeting this season, so you're seeing that familiarity, too. Oh, and they have study sheets. They know the tendencies, but all the players are rising to the occasion and making big plays, attacking the weaknesses. We saw a really red hot offensive first set, but the second set has all been all about blocking and defense and tougher serving. They've elevated their service game. Looking at the other side of the bracket, Oregon and Nebraska, they are in action right now, and that is in the fourth set, tied up at five. Nebraska leading the match two sets to one. That ball hit out, and now Ohio State. Set point. It will be Riley Raider behind the service line. Win 
Buckeyes tooling the block. Second set point, Buckeyes. Ohio State in a rotation where Londot is available out of the back row and Powell and Gonzalez in the front row. Pedraza can attack as well. Pedraza going to Gonzalez. Taylor Landfair. Gonzalez again, this time punches it. No touch, third set point coming up Ohio State. Pedraza trying to get Gonzalez going fast to try and get a touch off the block. Tight pass. Gonzalez to the floor, and Ohio State has evened up this match. Ohio State with a 25-21 win in set two. We're at least playing four sets here in Austin. Coverage continues all day. You can see every match streaming live on the ESPN app on here on ESPN2. We also have matches over on ESPNU in the round of 16. We've got a couple of Big Ten matches, too. We're seeing a rematch here. We're also going to see Penn State and Wisconsin, a Wisconsin team who looks really good. Remember, they're the defending national champions. Yeah, Wisconsin, one of the best blocking teams in the country, and they've reloaded in every position. I've been really impressed with them all season long. Look, we saw a lot of the seeds hold moving into this round of 16, but also, remember, there's a lot of more parity this year in the game, so we're seeing Houston reach its first regional semifinal since 1994. They had five set wins in first and second round, so no no lack of drama really in this volleyball tournament this year. Courtney Lyle and Holly McPeak with you. And we're excited too because we get to see the number one team in the nation, the Texas Longhorns, coming up later today against Marquette. This Longhorn team, they've always had the power, right? But this, this year they went out, they added some great setting and some great back row play. How much of a difference has that made? I feel like the chemistry for Texas is better than it's ever been. And they've strengthened their back court, you know, led by Zoe Fleck, one of the best Libros in the country. And, and you can tell it's made a difference. They're more confident in their all-around game. It helps, too, when you have now the three-time Big 12 Player of the Year in Logan Eggleston. Went through a little bit of a slump, if you will, in the season. Guess what? She is back. She is back, and head coach Jared Elliott did some things to kind of motivate her. Uh, Might have pulled her in the lineup a little bit, moved her around, and it really made a difference. She's fresh, she's firing, she's hitting with better range than she has all season long. And the team has talked about it. They want to win a national championship for Logan Eggleston. She has meant so much to this program. She has come in and will definitely leave the program better than she found it. So again, that match, Texas and Marquette coming up 30 minutes after the conclusion of our match. And it was Ohio State coming out of that second set to even things up. They won the set 2-25-21. Yeah, it was, it was defense and service pressure. And that second set was so different from the first. So we at least get four sets here in our first round of 16 match in Austin. Both offenses shown bright in the first set, but then we saw that defense step up. The block stepped up for Minnesota in set two. The serving got a little more heat hit for Ohio State in that second set. It certainly did. Ohio State was able to get Minnesota out of system, and that's how they were able to score in transition. Head coach for Ohio State, Jen Flynn Oldenburg, talked about, hey, we need to respond. And this has been a great response after losing the first set. Ohio State going back to the middle, and Erica Davis just by herself owning the net. And Minnesota has not been able to slow down Raider. First time to start the third set. And not bad taking 11 swings before your first attacking error. Landfair. Janasia Moore. Point, no Minnesota. touch, Point Minnesota. And Jen Flynn Oldenburg grabbing the green challenge card. This will be the first time that we've seen a challenge today. Oh, Each team goal. gets Coach two Miller. challenges, and if you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. So there was no touch called on this ball, so they're going to go back and look for Coach a touch. Miller. 
Janasia Moore for Ohio State attacking through the seam between the two blockers. And if it touched, it would hit the inside of Erica Davis's arm. So we wouldn't see finger movement. Hard to see. Maybe a baseline angle or end zone. Yeah, this is a great look here. It looks like Erica Davis's hand was pressed over before the ball passed by her. I don't think I see a touch on this. Yeah, I, it's hard to see on that. And it would have to be obvious for them to overturn it because the original call was no touch. In my opinion, hard to see anything. So they're still taking a look at this. Now two challenges for each team. If you're correct in your challenge, you get to keep it. If we go to a fifth set, each team gets an extra challenge. Extra time for coaches to chat with their players. And this is valuable because we've seen both teams use pretty much all their timeouts in each set. Minnesota won the first set 25-22, and then Ohio State responded 25-21 in set number two. We've got a decision here. And the point is going to stay with Minnesota. So Ohio State drops down to just one challenge remaining unless we go to a fifth set. And Kill Kelly keeps the serve going for the Gophers. Solace laying out. Here comes Moore. Janasia Moore. We were talking to Jen Flynn Oldenburg. We said sometimes she gets overlooked, right? There's so many stars on her team, but she just works so hard. And she has really put her head down and worked the last couple years to improve her game and never stop believing in herself. Comes from a volleyball family, too. Her mom played volleyball at Norfolk State. Some pop in the middle. Hello, Erica Davis. Erica Davis out of the middle for Minnesota with a crossbody swing attacking that right back defender, Emily Londot. You know, they were asked about playing an early start time for this match, and Erica Davis said, No worries, guys. I'm a morning person. I got you. <laughs> Me too. We're morning people. We are, yeah. Holly and I are up pretty early. <laughs> we're here for it. Wow, Londog was still able to terminate on that. Yeah, there, I'm not sure if the timing or the call on that set was a little different than what Londog expected, but she got her feet to the ball. And like I said, she's done such a good job of that. When she gets her feet there, she can hit with such nice range. Morbitzer just long on that serve. Morbitzer serving with pace and two space, but just long. Both teams trying to turn it up from the service line. I saw you make your little signal out. Yeah, thank you. Sorry, that's just. No, I love it. Holly has her own <laughs> signal up here. I have all she's, sorts of signals. She's the third line judge. <laughs> Riley Rader, that time instead of the power, a little soft touch over the middle blocker drops for Ohio State. Melanie Schaffmaster in the front row for Minnesota. Dishing it up to Landfair, and she is stopped. Mac Pedraza, big blocker on the right. She is the best blocker statistically on the Ohio State team, and that's unusual to see a setter with those kind of blocking numbers. Ohio State's block has been a little bit quiet. They've got some block touches, but that's just their third block in this match compared to seven for Minnesota. Gonzalez through the block. 
Shaftmaster to Carter Booth. Adria Powell in the middle for Ohio State gets a stop. Ball set a little bit low and Powell able to score. You know, we talked about Jen Flynn Oldenburg saying, how do you respond? Well, this is Ohio State's last six matches. They lost their final four matches of the regular season. Came out against Tennessee State and USC, won six sets and felt like they had some momentum. They remembered, hey, this is who we were. Don't let those four losses define us going into the most important part of our season. And they have responded. It felt like, too, they saw glimpses of who they were in that Wisconsin match. It was a, it was a battle. And, and statistically, they were pretty close with the Wisconsin. So they were moving in the right direction. A lot of experience helped that for sure. So again, double contact on Minnesota. Little soft touch by Pedraza to the middle. She will go to the back row and serve. And it was interesting, too. Jen Flynn Oldenburg mentioned Remember, we started the season 3 and 0. They came here to Texas and played Texas twice. Well, 0 and 3. 0 and 3, excuse me. Yes. They started 0 and 3. They played Texas twice to open the season. Started 0 and 3 and she said, "We learned. That's not going to define us. We learned how to get ourselves out of our record." It's, it's funny because I had them for their fourth match against Louisville on the road and they were able to win in four sets, but she did not seem worried about her team after a rough start. Yeah, that's the benefit of playing a tough schedule, right? Yeah, I tested think, early. Yeah, I, you got kind of see where you are as a team. Shaftmaster one hand to set that up to Booth. Bump set to Lon Dot. My goodness. That's a sharp, sharp angle. I tell you, she hits with such incredible range. We've seen her attack down the line. That time, in front of the three-meter line, unstoppable. That's a deep cut. That's a deep cut right there. Wow. Rooker, touched by Murr. Kylie Murr going down low, and it catches her high. But Rooker's been working that angle all day long. Shaftmaster late. I think she was in the middle trying to help on the quick attack and late getting her feet there to block Gonzalez. Uh, Gonzalez wide on the swing though. So it'll be a point for Minnesota. I'll try Gonzalez again. Can't tip into that block. This is a tough rotation right here. Gonzalez set a little bit inside and unable to side out. Now Minnesota on a little scoring run. Wiping up a little spot on the floor on the Ohio State side. 18 blocks now for Minnesota. Four by Shaftmaster. What a serve! Minnesota attacking the middle of the court and staying on Morbitzer, but that ball just drops. Takes a sharp left turn. CeCe McGraw, a two-time All-American. Oh, Erica Davis loved that. That ball set too tight to the net by Pedraza, and Minnesota able to score. That is a 5-0 run for the Golden Gophers, and Ohio State wants to talk about it. We're in set number three. Well, it's V-Week at ESPN. We partner with the V Foundation to highlight the urgent need for cancer research, game-changing research. It helps us save lives. You can join the fight against cancer. Please visit v.org slash donate. 100% of the donation goes directly to cancer research. Back here in the third set between Ohio State and Minnesota. That swing right there is going to end a 5-0 run by the Golden Gophers. And they needed that. All Ohio State needed to do was pass the ball. They've got Emily London. When she attacks, attacks out of the middle, she can go either way. 
We were just talking in the break. There's been swings, like momentum is shifting back and forth so much in this match between the two teams. And it's been mostly because of tough serving and defense. And little changes in momentum caused by that tough serve or that defense. Not at a 10. Shackmaster to Walker got through the block. McKenna Walker has taken some good swings from Minnesota today. Minnesota pass pushes that ball out to the left pin so fast. And Adria Powell, the middle for Ohio State, just a little bit late getting over the net. Walker leading the Gophers, eight kills. Pedraza back to Moore. You have to credit Mac Pedraza with holding the middle blocker for Minnesota at the net in isolating Janasia Moore on the outside. You see there, Davis late getting there to close the block. Davis 20 in white that quick set. Jeff Master gets her feet to the ball under it and pretty feet to her middle attacker. Now how does that feel when that connection is like that for a setter? And a Nothing middle? better. Yeah. <laughs> like butter. And then long dot. Wow. There it is again. Emily Londot, we've seen her go down the line, attack the outside blocker's hand, and now two really sharp hits from the right side. What adjustment are you trying to make as a blocker on Londot? Can you do anything? <laughs> well, I think they adjusted to slow down her line, and now she's going the other way. So it's tough to stop a good hitter. If she's in a good position, she has the advantage to score. Back and forth we go, Elise McGee subbing in to serve. Raider with the tip. McGee with the back set to Lanfair. Back to Raider. Wanda just took everything she had and put it right into that block. Pedraza is such a fantastic setter for Ohio State. She really puts pressure on the middle blocker. Carter Booth has to chase that play. Lawn not able to score on the right. It's just happening so fast. Lawn dot 19 kills, 11 digs. Pump set to Landfair. Murr gave it all she had. Cece McGraw, the libero for Minnesota, stepping in and passing that ball, putting her team back in system with a nice feed to Taylor Lanfair, who crushes it between the left back defender and the middle back. I mean, you think about how important the libero is when it comes to digging, obviously, and first contact, but also that secondary setting that the libero does is huge. Yeah, three really important skills for a libero to be great. When this almost comes up for that ball, but Ohio State really adept at attacking that middle with that soft shot. Booth off of one foot. And Carter Booth, that's her fifth kill. Shaftmaster puts up a really hittable ball for Carter Booth, which is a fun set, right? Especially when you've got someone with 6'7 who can hit with range. You just have to make sure you set that ball high enough, and Shaftmaster did so. Did you have a lot of 6'7 hitters, Holly? None. Yeah. I mean, back in the day, 6'3 <laughs> was gigantic. It still is to me. <laughs> <laughs> me too. Shaftmaster's the one standing at 6'3, this time the setter. Pedraza's gonna take it. That's why you gotta respect her. Minnesota relax defensively at the net when you've got Mac Pedraza or on the other side of the net, Shaftmaster, you cannot forget your blocking assignment. She just throws this ball down. Worker's hands aren't even up. Not in at 15. 
Landfair out of the back row. How does she do that? How does Emily Landon do that? I mean, incredible. She hits such a heavy ball, and she's fearless. She goes for it. Look, obviously, this is a rough set way off the net, falling away, but the arm speed is enough to be disruptive and score. That's her 20th kill today. 28th time this season she's had double figure kills. One arm, to, one arm save from Morbitzer. Landfair. Pedraza dishing it up to Londot. And that's the fearless component that head coach for Ohio State, Jay Flynn, o Jen Flynn Oldenburg, talks about. Pedraza is not afraid to reverse directions of the offense and go against the flow, especially when she's got Emily Londot. Ohio State has pulled ahead by two, and Minnesota is going to call a timeout. What a competitive third set. Emily Lundot dotting the eye for Ohio State today. 21 kills, 11 digs. She's impressive. I mean, everybody knows she's going to get the ball, and she's still able to score. When she's off balance, when the tempo's a little weird, she still gets the job done. 15th double-double this season, leading the team. And by the way, she's hitting 545. So that's a giant number for a pin hitter. Especially almost through the third set. You see the range with which she hits there. She gets her feet to the ball, looks like she can hit ankle, and then goes down the line. And then we saw her go inside the block, Carter Booth. On the inside of that six foot seven block, she is unafraid. And we saw two impossible angles from the right, and then an emergency swing there. Still able to score for Ohio State. 21 kills. Uh, her season high, Holly, is 23 kills. We're she, gonna get there. Yeah, today. I was gonna say. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Bold prediction. We're here for it. Maybe not. Yes, we are definitely here for it. Ohio State has scored three points in a row in what has been a very tight set. Here in set number three, we'll at least play four sets in this round of 16 battle. Winner of this one will get either Texas or Marquette on Saturday in the round of eight. Early in this third set, we saw Ohio State bleed out four or five points. They were struggled. Lawn Dark got them out of trouble, but now it's Minnesota. You're seeing stretches of momentum changes, and that's what good teams are going to do to one another. Ohio State's trying to get to its first regional final since 2004. For Minnesota, it would be their sixth regional final in the last 11 years under Hugh McCutcheon. What adjustments, what do you want to see differently from Minnesota? How do you stop the runs? Well, one, you need a good pass, right? That's going to get you back in system. When both teams are passing well, that's when their offensive numbers were really high. Gonzalez into the block. Pedraza lets her try it again. This time bringing the heat. Gabby Gonzalez. What I've noticed is when Ohio State can stay in a rally, make a dig, they're really good at transition offense. And that's a credit to Mac Pedraza making good decisions to score off of a dig. Ohio State can certainly dig the volleyball too. They're first in the Big Ten in digs per set. Booker. Cross there to save the swing from Londot. McKenna Wooker gets to do it again. Land fair back row. Beautiful attack in transition out of the back row by Taylor Landfair. Look at the location she attacks. Merce steps into the court and she goes sharp into that angle one dot attacking in the middle of the court every time she does that and they run that play in that particular rotation every time that time minnesota had three blockers in front of her and they were she was still able to score pretty impressive unstoppable today 22 kills one kill away from tying her season high Holly's bold prediction that she will get it. 
We still have very we still bold. Have, we have a, still have a set to play too. Oh, I love that swing from Taylor Lanfair, and that's something they've had to adjust her coming out of the back row because she was over the line in the first set. She got called early over the three meter line twice, and you don't see that a lot. But this time, two in a row kills out of the back row for Lanfair. Lanfair's up to 11 kills, 233 hitting. There it is. That is 23, tying her season high, Emily Lundot. Amazing. I guess if you're that right back defender, you have to step inside and, and put your helmet on. That's a heavy ball. It makes a different sound. Helmet, chin strap, Everything. face mask, all the things. Good angle from Winnis. Raider in the middle. Riley Raider, she's in double figures now. Kylie Murr makes that play happen. Perfect control dig, and Pedraza able to run that quick, high percentage attack to Raider in the middle. Erica Davis is blocked, Londa? Londa in helping on that gap set to Davis. Watch number 22 in the front row step in and help on that middle attack. Quick hands over the net, good eye work. You can see her eyes tracking that ball. Quick press over and it pays off for an Ohio State point. scoring run for Ohio State and Minnesota calls its final timeout. Look, addition of all these balls to Emily Lundot is Mac Pedraza and we've talked about volleyball families. Mac Pedraza is one of several ladies on this Ohio State roster whose mom also played volleyball or his, her mom Chris actually played for Minnesota. Crazy, right? The rivalry, but her, Christine Schaefer now Pedraza. She is an amazing athlete and person. She coaches, gets back. They have a barn on their property where she gives private lessons. And she was also a professional beach volleyball player too. Yeah, no, so I've known her for a long time and I've seen little Mac grow up. Baby Mac Pedraza coming over to the beach courts with her mom. There she is, Christine Schaefer Pedraza right there. She is feeling it. <laughs> she and her right. husband, Chris, have traveled all over the country. They've been at every game supporting Mac in her senior season. What stands out to you most about Mac's setting? I just love, I mean, what her coach said about her. She's fearless. Yeah. She just goes for it. She's very confident feeding her hitters. I love the way she communicates with her players, always face contact, giving her hitters confidence, and that's what setters need to do. Right now she's helping Ohio State hit 343 here in set number three. Buckeyes need three points to take the set. Winnis. Light it up, Jenna Winnis. Shaft Master got that ball to a perfect location. Winnis hits that ball flat off the hands. Good arm power by number two in white. Jenna Winnis, we saw her swing on the left side. This time she goes right because Landfair's in the front row, solo block on the right pin for Minnesota. 10 blocks now for Minnesota. That's the 21st time this season they've had double figure blocks, the seventh straight match. That ball looked like it was hit long, no touch, but the lines person in the corner called the touch. Hugh McCutcheon might challenge this call. Yeah, and he does. This will be the first challenge by Minnesota. Riley Raider getting that set in the middle. Erica Davis, the only player there that could have touched that. Ooh. So 
looking for a touch on this. The original call was no touch. Excuse me, the ruling is a touch. They're looking to see. Yeah, I think you can see your finger. It looks like there's finger movement on the left hand of Erica Davis in white. could just be barely off the pinky. Hard to say. It's got to be obvious in order for them to overturn the original call of a touch on this ball. third set the offensive numbers have come back to life we saw really low numbers in that second set and we see another angle and I think we have a decision points gonna stay with Ohio State so they confirm the call of a touch I think you can see Erica Davis's pinky move so Minnesota down to two challenges. Ohio State, excuse me, down to one challenge. Ohio State also has a challenge. So now they're saying the call, they reverse the call and give the point to Minnesota. I think the hand motion was incorrect, but he stands by his call because he explained it to both coaches. Okay, so they're going to overturn the call. And it's going to be Correct. a point for Minnesota, and Minnesota will still have two challenges left. The Kelly serve greases the tape. Wow, CeCe McGraw, what a dig. Pedraza, Londot. There it is, Emily Londot. That's 24 kills now. It ties her career high. These are transition swings. How about that dig right there for Minnesota CC McGraw? But a free ball to Ohio State. We know where they're going with this ball. Emily Londot hitting with range. We've seen line, sharp angle, and that time deep cross court. Gonzalez underneath it. Janaysia Moore. CC hustling. Londot tip. Shaft master to Landfair. Taylor Landfair using that block. That's 12 kills for Taylor. And Jenna Wenis went all the way across the court to dig that tip shot to the middle, setting up this transition kill by Landfair to the corner. <laughs> Mac Pedraza gives Ohio State set point. Shaft master, the setter, the right back defender for Minnesota almost comes up with that ball, but bodies on the floor and they can't get it back over. Tough first contact. It's going to be a tight pass to Buckeyes lead this match two to one. The service pressure and the blocks at the net as well as transition points were the difference for Ohio State in that third set. And Emily Londot is playing a heck of a match. 24 kills to tie a career high hitting 538 fourth set coming up. Look, we have two matches in action right now, and it's getting spicy already. Check out the bracket. Um, here's where we are up in Austin. Texas and Marquette coming up 30 minutes after our match concludes Ohio State, Minnesota. But looking over to Louisville, Kentucky, things are getting 
full aggressive over there. The fourth set between Oregon and Nebraska went 32-30 in favor of Oregon. So they're going to a fifth set right now. That's over on ESPNU. Incredible. And, you know, Oregon's been putting up really high offensive numbers all season long. They're hitting 218 today to compare to 229 for Nebraska. But Mimi Collier, the freshman, one of the best freshmen in the country, 23 kills on 64 swings for Oregon. Yeah, and Brooke Nunaviller has 14. So again, that match is over on ESPNU right now, going into a fifth set. We're in the fourth set here. Emily Londot has tied her career high with 24 kills. Taylor Landfair has 12 kills. And Minnesota, if they want to extend this match, they have to win this set. Minnesota's going to try the middle first. It comes right back at Carter Booth. And Emily Londot for Ohio State is helping in the middle. She was late, but her hands were in the right location. Right now, everything Emily Londot touches is working out for Ohio State. McGraw diving for it. Landfair dug up. Merle was there. Here comes Shuttle Wenas on the right pin. Minnesota attacking back in transition, and Jenna Wenas can attack from anywhere. Big arm cross court gets fast through that seam for Minnesota. Short serve. Jenna Wenas. You know what they say, Minnesota. Minnesota, I, I hear there's some t-shirts that might say that. Yeah, it was one of her teachers that came up with the phrase. Remember, she's from Frisco, Texas, about three hours away from where we are here in Austin. Wondot readjusting. on Ohio State, point for the Gophers. Minnesota on a little scoring run to start off this fourth set. This is a rotation for Ohio State where they like to run Emily Londot out of the middle of the court, but they need to pass to do that. It was not the pass they were looking for. Gonzalez is going to terminate anyway. That's a big time swing from Gabby Gonzalez getting Ohio State out of trouble, out of that rotation off the hands. Ending a 3-0 run by Minnesota. A win for Ohio State in this set, and they are moving on to the regional final. and Pedraza able to run that quick transition to Adria Powell out of the middle. The control of that dig by Murr is so impressive. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. And then it oh, is from Gonzalez. Both teams have had dribbler serves that are dropping. Have you seen the service pressure tune up as we've gone yeah, on? Yeah, definitely. Both teams have stepped it up. Now that first set, it was some easy serves being sent back and forth by both sides. That's why both offenses hit over 400. The push by Shaftmaster a bit long. Shaftmaster loves to go to that deep corner. That time, too much oomph on it. Shaftmaster in the front row for Minnesota with Booth and Landfair. Pedraza to Lon Dot. That one drops in the court off of that Minnesota block who has really shown up as this match has gone on. That's 11 blocks now. 
That time, Worker and Booth able to shut down Londa. That has not happened very often today. Burr handles it nicely. And Janaysha Moore, it's so fun to watch the power that comes that she brings to the net because she's standing at six feet tall. Looks a little shorter out there compared to some of the other players. We've got some giant players yes. on the court right now, but the arm speed able to get through that block and Minnesota just laid on their press over the net defensively. And she's one of three players for Ohio State with double figure kills. Landfair back row. More. Not afraid of the block at all. Gabby Gonzalez comes up number eight in red with a big dig for Ohio State. Good control, and then Pedraza able to get that ball fast out to Janasia Moore, who can attack that seam quickly. And Booth just a little bit late closing that block. 11 kills for Moore. Carter Booth, it hit the antenna, so that's a point for the Buckeyes. Yeah, I think that ball was set a little wide and Booth trying to chase it. Gets a piece of the antenna. Ohio State on a run. And Minnesota has to call a timeout. Important fourth set here. Minnesota down by three. Courtney Lyle and Holly McPeak with you from Austin. Our first match in the Austin Regional here in the round of 16, Ohio State on top of Minnesota here in set number four. A win for Ohio State in this set, they're moving on. Minnesota has got to win this set to force a fifth. Buckeyes on a 3-0 run. Winner gets either Texas or Marquette on Saturday in the round of eight. Riley Rader turned it. Riley Rader knows she's got Carter Booth in front of her and she's got to attack quickly either way. And she does so there for the Ohio State point. It's an eight to two run now for the Buckeyes. Walker has a comeback at her. Pedraza to Raider, wide open court for Riley Raider. She's at 12 kills. I could hear her, Riley Raider from here yelling at her middle blocker in, I'm uh, sorry, her setter in transition, knowing that she's available to hit that ball. She gets on it quick, beating Booth middle to middle. And look at the options Ohio State has right now. Raider in the middle hitting 450. Londot on the right side hitting 476. Set to Wooker. Blocked! Riley Raider, 20 in red, drops her inside hand, taking that sharp angle away from Wooker. Watch this in transition. Left hand turned back into the court, takes that angle away. Great defensive block at the net. Jen Flynn Oldenburg talks about Riley Raider, her team first mentality. It has always been tremendous. And this year, she's added the piece to her game where if her offense isn't clicking, it doesn't affect the other areas of her game. She can still go out and find different ways to score points. And that's a sign of a mature player because when you're young, obviously offense is a big thing. Everyone talks about it. So learning how to take pride in the other parts of your game, really important. Pedraza with the hustle, with the one-handed set. Walker saved by Pedraza. Shaftmaster feeding Winnis. Janisha Moore. The wind up, the swing, the termination. That's the best hit of the day from Janisha Moore. Ohio State is feeling it. Defensively, bodies on the floor, but they recover. And look at that swing to the corner. Twelve kills for Janasia Moore. Booker reloads. Wandot. McGraw saved it with one arm. It's a free ball back to the Buckeyes. Can't stop her. So many 
defensive touches both sides of the net, but Pedraza able to stay in system to Janasia Moore to finish this playoff. Free ball, Raiders established herself as a threat, and then Erica Davis late to close that block in the middle. Timeout, Minnesota. That'll be their final timeout of the set. Look at the offensive weapons today for Ohio State. Emily Londot tying her career high with 24 kills. Moore with 13, Raider with 12 from the middle. And I feel like Ohio State is feeling it right now. In this set, they're hitting over 400. And they're turning digs into points, and that's the key. They're able to control the dig well enough for Pedraza to run the offense. We talked about how these two teams know each other well. This is the third meeting this season. Well, these players know each other well, too. Specifically, Kylie Murr, the Libero for Ohio State, and Melanie Schaffmaster, the setter for Minnesota. Look at them as little baby volleyball players. That's Kylie, number nine, and then um, Schaffmaster is number five, and that's baby Kenzie Knuckles from Nebraska. I love it. The volleyball's, volleyball's a small world. You're going to grow up playing with and against a lot of these players, and it's great to see lifelong friendships like this. Yeah, Melanie was telling us, she said, I think I've played with Kylie since we were like 10 years old, maybe before. Grew up in the club scene together and now playing together in the NCAA, playing against each other in the NCAA tournament. Yeah, battling against each other to see who will advance. Kylie, the Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year. She is first in career digs at Ohio State. And that, ba that back row play has been so important for Ohio State because they've really been able to terminate in transition as long as they can dig it up. It, well, and it's the quality of that first contact. Kylie Murray is diving all over the place, but she's giving good quality contact that they can run their offense with. Serve is long from Landot. It's now a seven to two run for Ohio State. One seven to one. A must win set for Minnesota here in the round of 16. New career high. Give it to Emily Landot with 25 kills. That was a rotation where Mac Pedraza in the front row. She had two hitters on the left side of the court and Emily Londot, the hot hitter for Ohio State, that time going down the line out of the back row. Jenna Wynn is showing off her sharp angle. Jenna Wynn is trying to bring the emotion and the energy to her team, trying to get things going. She knows this has been a game of momentum changes. Minnesota, the number two seed in the Texas quadrant, one of the hottest teams coming into the NCAA tournament. They're in trouble right now. Winnis off hands. Pedraza's gonna call back on Gabby Gonzalez. Put it down. Ohio State did so many good things in that play. First, the way their ball is coming off the block, they're able to control it and attack back. So even though they're not blocking it, they're getting good defensive touches because their block is well formed. One arm save. And then Minnesota. When it's right side attack so quick, she is trying to give her team that energy, trying to get them going back in this match. This is a must win set for Minnesota. to reach for it. Landfair. In. Down the line with authority. Big time swing right there by Taylor Landfair. Defense was cheating up and right back, Londot stepped in and Taylor Landfair tags the line for Minnesota.
Pedraza pushing it to the left side, and Gabby Gonzalez coming on, her seventh kill. It's strange, the timing was off, but the, it worked. Through, throwing off the defense and that tip to the middle has been working for Gonzalez. How much does experience help in that situation? It helps a lot. This is a core team for Ohio State who's been playing together a long time. Pedraza's serve is wide, point Minnesota. Minnesota has a huge off, sorry, defensive line at the net. Shaftmaster, Landfair, and Booth. Can they score some points with this front row? They are fourth in the nation in blocks per set. That one wide, point Minnesota. Here come the Gophers. If Ohio State can pass the ball, watch them run Long Dot out of the middle of the court. There they go. Every time they put her there, they give her the ball. She just hits with so much range, can go cross body or the other way. And even though Minnesota's putting three in front of her, they can't stop her. Minnesota, it's a point for Ohio State. That ball was dug tight to the net. Pedraza was getting there trying to set it. And Booth's hands, the blocker for Minnesota, go up and aggressively defend it. You're not allowed to block the setting motion. Taylor Landfair, that puts her at 15 as Minnesota is trying to dig out of a hole. They're hitting 043 here in this fourth set. In Ohio State hitting 455. Pushing it to Wooker. Moore into the block. Block number 12 for Minnesota. There's Carter Booth. Carter Booth owning the net that time. Good eye work here. Seeing where that ball's going. Press over and Minnesota able to score a point defensively at the net with that big front row. Dot. I mean, you can't say enough about what she has done today, just continuing to increase that career high, too. That is 27 kills. And she has all the tools that time flat off the hands of the well-formed block of Minnesota. All the tools. Free ball back to the Gophers. Shaftmaster will run Booth on the slide into the net. And Ohio State, they're starting to feel it. They can taste that regional final. Buckeyes five points away from their first regional final since 2004. Sharpest angle yet for Emily Londot. We talk about the tools. Are you kidding me? We've seen the line, the angle. This is a cut shot, a redirection, sharp along the net, the hand contact on the ball, perfect by Londot. Wow. Minnesota in some trouble here. Remember Hugh McCutcheon retiring at the end of this season, moving on to a different role in the athletic department. It's been incredible what he's been able to do with this Gopher program. Three national semifinal appearances. But their run in danger right now. It certainly is. Ohio State playing the match of their lives. Merwana 
read that one, putting her body in front of that heater, but just goes wide. Minnesota point. Cece McGraw stepping back, hoping she can give a little momentum to the Gophers. They got to play catch up here. More attacking here. That one doesn't clear the net, and now Minnesota knows that it's go time. They need to put their foot on the gas and score. Minnesota needs to force a fourth set, a fifth set, in order to extend this match. A win for Ohio State. They're moving on. Lanther out of the back row. Janasia Moore, quick, dynamic off the floor and wonderful seal of the net. And there's going to be a challenge on this. I think there was a net violation earlier in the rally. It looked like it. There was a ball dug tight to the net. Somebody tried to save it and it looked like they caught net contact. And I think it was Londot, so they can go back and look. The coach has to be specific on what they're looking for in the rally. So Hugh McCutcheon has pulled that green challenge card. I think it was right there. It looked like Londod playing that ball out of the net. Might have got a piece. We have a camera angle that comes from under the net that might show that better. Janasia Moore, what a block. It was hard to tell if it went into the net first and then hit Londot. Oh, does she graze it there? The original call was no net. So Minnesota is asking them to look to see if there was a net violation. And do her arms, does her platform hit that net? And they have a decision. The original call was no net violation. Those of you just joining us, this call was just overturned. There was a net violation after going back and looking on Ohio State. So a point for Minnesota. Courtney Lyle, Holly McPeak with you from Austin. If you're just joining us, watching Oregon boot Nebraska from the tournament, this has been a good one, too, in this Big Ten showdown. Ohio State a win in this set, and they are moving on. Londot has been incredible. And that's going to be a point for Ohio State. CeCe McGraw digging that ball for Minnesota, but that ball passing that pole, unable to keep that in play. Emily Londot steps back. 29 kills for Emily Londot. And a service error. Ohio State has not been to a regional final since 2004, and they are three points away from doing that. Incredible. I mean, I said it earlier, they're playing the match of their lives. This is the best I have seen them play all season long. Minnesota won the first set, but then it's been Ohio State ever since. Moore with the tip. Erica Davis sends it in the sky for Wooker. Murr with the one arm save. Jackmaster back to Wooker. No touch signal, point Ohio State. How about Kylie Murr for Ohio State? One arm dig and then Janasia Moore able to get a touch on it. They are playing inspired volleyball right now. Ohio State talked about how do you respond? How do we respond from losing our last four regular season matches? It's been a great response in this tournament. Jenna Winnis. And you know, Minnesota, if you're a Golden Gopher, you're playing your heart out right now because this is Hugh McCutcheon's last season. He's been such a huge impact and made a huge impact on this Minnesota team. He will move into an assistant AD role for coaching at the conclusion of the season. Landfair chasing it. 
Dallas. Match point, Ohio State. McGraw with the pass to Landfair. Warbits are up. Gabby Gonzalez puts it to the floor. We'll see you in the regional final, Buckeyes. Incredible performance by Ohio State today. They played incredible inspired volleyball and got better as the match went on. For Hugh McCutcheon, 11th season at Minnesota, it comes to an end. It has been phenomenal to see what he has done with this Minnesota program, but the Golden Gophers, their road ends here. Ohio State sending the Gophers home and the Buckeyes in the regional final for the first time since 2004, behind 29 kills for Emily Londot hitting 500 today. I'm not sure there's many people who thought that was gonna happen today. Minnesota was the hottest team in the country and uh, there were a lot of teams that were scared to play them. Not Ohio State. Ohio State is unafraid. This is a team that's played many years together and has a lot of confidence in one another. What a transition it has been for Ohio State from maybe three weeks ago, the end of the regular season. They lose their last four regular season matches. Then they have to say, hey, we're flipping a switch. It's tournament time. Yeah, it's scary to lose four going into the tournament. No, it's, it's win or go home. And they stepped up when it counted. So Ohio State survives. They will move on to play in the round of eight. That will be on Saturday at 6 Eastern on ESPNU. They will face either Texas or Marquette. That match coming up in approximately 30 minutes here on ESPN2. What a performance for Ohio State, a veteran team. One of those players standing out, we mentioned her, Emily Landot, and she is joining us right now. A career high, Emily, 29 kills for you. Why were you working so fluidly in this offense today? I think everyone was just really doing their job. Um, the passers were passing, Mac was setting, and I mean, we just took it from there, and the hitters were getting really good hits. Did you feel like an underdog coming into this match today? Um, no, I think we knew what our potential was, and we didn't really show that the last um, outing with Minnesota, but I think we really proved it today that we, we can hang with them. Jen Flynn has talked to us about how do you respond? How do you guys respond to the way the regular season ended? What has the attitude and the response been like internally with this team? Yeah, I think everyone has a great mindset. Just moving, moving forward, we're going one day at a time, one moment at a time. Like, one rep, that's all that matters in this moment. So I think we're, we've are we been doing a really good job with that. Hey, Emily, you're moving on to the regional final. Heck yeah, yeah. Woo. We will see you on Saturday, congratulations. Thank you. Ohio State eliminates the two seed, Minnesota. They win it in four sets and we'll play again on Saturday. More to come from Austin, but the Buckeyes victorious tonight.